Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project. Um, this is the sun in full spectrum and visible spectrum from the 17th of May. We have had endless weeks of cloudy skies. We're going to start with full spectrum. Uh, this includes ultraviolet, visible, and infrared spectrums. This is the initial view that you get without the double stack, which brings a lot more detail. And what is going on here is I'm dialing in that camera. Um, we're going to close out with the visual spectrum camera because you never know which one's going to give you the better view. And today, visual spectrum was a much better view than full spectrum. Uh, as you can see, there was the most impressive thing was the prominence at right. And uh, over the short while that I shot, I don't know, hour and a half or something like that, um, you could really see it changing shape. So if you pay attention to the shape of that um, prominence on the right, you can see that this footage was shot after the visible spectrum uh, footage that you're going to see at the end. But what I'll do is I'll run this through some filters. As I dial this camera in, you can see it gets better and better and better. And basically yesterday, overexposing a bit, uh, was what needed to happen to get the best view of the prominences which is what we're looking at here and if you pay attention to the shapes of those and compare it to the visual spectrum camera which is going to load in a second but it's pretty impressive to see and there was actually a smaller one at the top that doesn't encode into video very well that was kind of detached from the prominence itself which is cool to watch because it changes shape so now we're going to load uh, the visual, vis, excuse me, visual spectrum only without the double stack, which means there's less detail. But what that does is it really gives you a kind of stripped down view of all the prominences that are visible. And up at the two o'clock position, you can see the detached filament up there, um, right above the little bump of the prominence. So now we're going to load up with the double stack and you can see how much surface detail comes in and I will dial that in and uh, I didn't edit it out. I'll show you what it looks like as it gets dialed in, which is what we're doing here. Basically you have, with the solar scope alone, you have two main adjustments. Um, a, a focus ring and an etalon which deals with the, the blocking filter and such. And then when you put the double stack on, there's another couple of focusing implements that you have to dial in. So the next one that I load in will be the best load um, with the double stack in visual spectrum which is coming right here and uh, as I get away from the manipulation you'll be able to see the uh, the prominences a bit better. There's not a lot going on on the surface of the sun right now. There is a couple of very slight sunspots. Um, you can look at the SOHO view to compare it to what I'm seeing. Um, which I do sometimes. I didn't yesterday. I looked at it the day before when we couldn't shoot because we've had so many cloudy skies. This is with a fine edge filter which adds a little bit of visual motion. Right now I'm adjusting the ISO and the aperture down. And right there you can start to see the prominences on the right and the filaments leaving. Uh, it's a little tougher to see the detached filament up at the top. So what we did here is when I loaded up the full spectrum camera, for those who follow, you've seen me use kind of an auto lighting technique, which is what we started to do with the sun yesterday. Um, the first thing that you're going to notice when it goes out of frame, and we're using this method, is you can see every imperfection in the lens, which is that stuff center, and you can see the lens flare, the circular lens flare on the lens. This is a Coronado scope, and it's made by Mead, and you can just kind of see that's pretty shoddy to be frank that's why I refuse to buy anything from Mead anymore but while we were doing this we saw some interesting things um, we saw an exact replica of the Sun that was not quite it looked almost like a reflection and so at the time I didn't know what to think about it and I've thought about it since and I may present that footage but I'm going to do a test first where I take a long tube and put it over the end of the scope to ensure that it's not any kind of lens flare and this would be similar to say having a telephoto with a hood on the end you've seen the hoods they put over telephotos so that there is no lens flare my telephoto has it and it never has lens flare but I've got to determine if what we saw which was pretty much a replica of the Sun um, was in fact some kind of reflection um, off the lens 
because with the double stack on, uh, there's not much of a recess at the end of the scope, so it's possible that's what we saw. Unfortunately, today we can't see the sky again, but next chance we get, we're going to put a really long tube over the end of the scope and see if we can replicate what we saw. And uh, what you'll see here is just uh, the auto lighting. And over in the right, for those who can see all the way to the edge of the frame, you can kind of see that bubble. Well, when we were doing this, we got the sun about four or five sun widths out of frame, and we found a replica, like a reflection of the sun. And I couldn't figure it out for the life of me, so we're going to need to run tests just to ensure that it's not some sort of lens flare off the end of the double stack. Anyhow, there it is. Uh, I will be shooting, but we have had a lot of cloudy skies. It has not been easy. So there it is. Cheers.